pretty good performance. Pretty good, but not as good as the U.S. market. We've seen an extremely hard run by the U.S. up for five consecutive sessions and a rise of 1.8% overnight. In fact, the Nasdaq hitting the highest level that we've seen in over a decade. Our market, though, managing a gain of 1%. It was on fairly light volumes. We did bounce back from the low volume day yesterday because of that Victorian, uh, uh, sorry, on Monday. Uh, but $4.5 billion worth of stock being traded today. Extremely positive, though. All sectors trading higher. In fact, in the top 50 stocks, we only saw five stocks trading lower. And, of course, the highlights were in the commodities and the banking space. We saw Rio Tinto up by 1.5%. But a little bit of a strange uh, occurrence in that commodity space. While we did see those diversified miners doing well, and those miners that are exposed to base metals, those gold miners going the other way and seeing some sharp losses. We saw Newcrest down by 1.8%, and so, some of the smaller gold miners losing even more. And that's because while, while base metals had a good session overnight, we did see gold prices going backwards. Part of that was the FOMC statement, no mention of QE3 there. And of course, money printing is is great news for an alternative currency like gold but with no hints of that we did see gold prices taking a step back in terms of economic news we saw consumer confidence coming in quite soft for March we saw a decline of 5% we also saw dwelling starts for the fourth quarter and they were down by 6.9% so not very impressive in terms of economic data coming out here domestically one stock that was quite interesting to watch today was computer share it was up by 5.5% and it really went into a brief trading hold at the end of the session and it looks like it's going to go into a joint venture to form a digital mail company and it'll own 40 percent of this JV so an interesting announcement coming out late in the session but altogether a positive session although we did underperform the US there, there does seem to be a degree of risk I mean you have to look at the the general sort of eagerness to jump on board a lot of uh, hybrid note offerings I mean, we've got uh, rumors at least of Woolworths looking I think for seven year dated unsecured uh, notes expectations that will be well taken up I mean the banks obviously doing some uh, some placements there is some risk out there I think the strange thing about 2012 is we've seen this rally in terms of equity markets and yet we're seeing this huge demand for what's seen as safe haven assets. So looking at corporate notes and while they do have equity characteristics, it's the debt characteristics that I believe are attracting a lot of investors to these type of investments. We saw the AGL Energy, uh, the yield, they're looking to start off at 8.25% or about 380 basis points above the 90-day bank bill swap rate. These types of investments have been have been gaining in popularity even with the market rally going on and in fact if you have a look at the government bond market here in Australia about 80 percent of that consists of overseas investors and that's probably helping to keep the Aussie dollar quite high as well so a little bit strange that we're seeing somewhat of a volumeless recovery in terms of the equity markets and still this huge demand out there for safe haven assets uh, despite the the risk on environment that we're seeing so a little bit strange in that regard and a, a bit of a warning signal I guess in the back of investors heads but in in terms of the difference between the Australian and the US market in terms of performance the US market has been doing fantastically well but it's been through a lot more pain as well and what we're slowly starting to see in terms of the fundamentals coming through from the US our analysts starting to upgrade their earnings for US companies well here in Australia we did see earnings season pretty much in line with expectations but we're still seeing downgrades to FY12 and FY13 earnings so we are still seeing a little bit more uh, I guess for the Australian market to jump through before it gets to upgrades to earnings which should uh, add to some positive momentum for the Australian market while the US is already there they've been through a lot of the pain and we are seeing analysts now upgrading their expectations in terms of full year earnings. Uh, yet again Julia another good movement for QBE shares closing up 3.3 percent. Uh, your thoughts on the reasoning why we are seeing uh, the strength in QB as well as a big decision a lot of QBE shareholders face at the moment particularly with the, the share offer. I mean your thoughts around that? I mean, QBE is a great example of what you want to see happening when a technical level is broken. And what you want to see are some strong volumes coming through after the break of the key resistance levels. And what we've seen with QBE Insurance, if I can bring up the one-year share price, is this is what it looks like. This is the one-year share price. And you can see that we've seen a bottom triangle. Yesterday, we saw that bottom triangle being broken. And the key to watch out for here is the volume. The average volume for QBE Insurance, the value traded per day in 2012, has been about 92 million dollars per day 
Yesterday it hit more than $100 million, more than $120 million. And we're seeing the same today. In fact, the volume today, uh, the value traded today, up 41% on the average of 2012, coming in at $130 million. So not only have you seen the break of this key uh, resistance level for QB insurance, but you've seen a volume surge as well. So it shows that buyers are coming in. So probably seeing a bit of technical buying behind QBE share price, but also on the fundamental side, we have seen analysts upgrading their expectations in terms of the insurance sector. Most of the bad news has been priced in. The last 52 weeks has been an extremely difficult one for the insurance sector. But at the moment, QB ticking a lot of the box in terms of capital. We've seen that capital raising now past its succession plans. We've seen that announced as well, as well as margin rebasing as well. We've seen premiums rising, and we may see surprises to the upside in the current financial year. So the fundamentals or the outlook for QB insurance is improving because the bad news already priced in, and perhaps we could see some good surprises prizes this year and then in terms of the technicals we've seen an important technical break and unlike the Australian share market where we're seeing a volumeless recovery we've seen volumes coming back into this stock.